gets $12,000 making a life like, what's the difference between a nine-year-old child and a nine-year-old gun? It's where the dust in the place, no matter how much mental math I do. The murder doesn't add up to me, and I know 25 to life is not greater than more people to live in. So, why do the children keep dying? I know broken homes be the barriers can't nobody solve, account for, or add to when my students are just products of their environment and the world will tell them that they're the problem to go get an education and chase the American dream like they kill King and solve for Malcolm X like the children aren't dying at their desk and my students will say, that's what you think, but we're where from, a degree won't see me. And my count the bullet grades you will be the charge that the feds gave you a nine to five ain't the solution. One percent you make is a percent open sand takes and I teach my students. That zero divided by zero is zero. So if I have nothing and you have nothing and we kill each other, then our mothers have nothing. And what's a funeral to do? But put them in the negatives, the children should be in school learning how to carry the one, but they too busy being pallbearers, carrying one. They keep passing, instead of passing, graduating to the ground, from the classroom to the casket, we did not come on three-fifths of a person to be dying over eights the students to prison pipeline is just a fraction of their oppression. I am tired of seeing my students below poverty line like they call them long like they're less than the children are being backed into the corners of their homes, looking for the right angle, praying for the right angel, but they don't have the means. They're stuck in survival mode, looking for a medium, a middle ground, anything to stand on and grow from confessions about street life from a math teacher. The only time I feel my students is when one of them doesn't make it back into the classroom. I know this world wants to break us down to our most simplest of forms, to conquer and divide. I know killing doesn't solve anything. It's the square roots of the problem. It's my students. You must know. You are not the sum of your sums, but you are someone worth living. Energy remains eternal, lyrical vibration, turning herbs at the speed of life, recite a sacred divine cadence, 
capable of getting you higher than dime bags and herbals, I'm fly with the flow. But you don't understand, I can fly with my flow. Reach out and touch the sky when I flow. It's the ghetto Rio, speaks lethal, stands and stack with enough heat to leave 33rd degree burns on the butt cheeks of the devil from stanzas of fantastic and galactic wordplay. They say Satan sabotage, just wanna cut off half my tongue to keep my mouth from running away like Kunta Kinte. But you should not defeat these rebels. Regenerated resonance reactivates revolutionary radio frequencies, sound check checking, consecutive ignorance from knowledge that's limited, head nodding, your nodding, following the calling of college, only to major in self separation and study visionary Caucasian civilizations, tap dancing on our ancestors' shoulders where rich white folks applaud the latest rhythmic renditions. Listen, this is spoken nuclear fusion, using my heart's drum patterns, chasing constellations, freedom reborn in the form of a crack addicted b boy on the top of my tongue, breaking, and I can taste it, driving. Creatively crazy, crazy cotton, cotton my cadence. Cause I swear every rap song I hear sounds like the screams of Sarah's baby. New Orleans and Haiti attached to her back. Cause even in this millennium, whips still crack. It's like the song of Sajifo keeps calling us back. Song going in, all the way in to a middle past. His passengers play the role of polyrhythmic syncopations with drum patterns. Reflected and deflected the ocean grave and shot up blocks for children play the role of shot out hated and tainted on corners cast in the motor concrete cages for bullets to renade rib cages sirens invading like aliens blue lights beckoning from blankets of bereavement and babies bathing inside the broken wounds on hieroglyphic Babylonian women beatboxing tunes in the form of crisis divine empty tomb while Osiris sues for royalties to religions remix African trap because God has returned and she wants what she lost back. And I already told you, I do not live here, so I had to go in. No, not in. I mean, I really went in, and I'm not coming back. Far beyond transatlantic continental shift, and this isn't even my planet. Metaphysics mingle with madness. I can't stand it. Side of those words stranded in between my stanzas. Somebody said Slankston seems to have gone insane, and it feels like ISIS is writing the diagnosis on my page in a rage. But little miniature hairy tubbins are walking into wounds like caves, performing abortions on black babies just to prevent the birth of more slaves, because we still refuse to embrace our own greatness beyond transatlantic spitting or spoken word. This is Hebrew hieroglyphics sent in the form of light transmissions causing pages to resonate with the frequency of the most high. Ripping in the rhythm of remembrance my molecules spinning faster than warp engines indigo flow poems composed in the words of Saji Fo. So forget rhyme schemes. We be saw star scenes spitting light beams in the direction of the competition. Don't even need a mothership. I'm walking to the next dimension. Word to Saul Williams, warrior women's wounds still waiting for the greatest Americans to be incarnated. And preparation is my mission. Step on stage and ascend it. I'm gone. Now who's coming with me? Wow. Hello. Oh, yes. Welcome. My name is Lance Williams. I wear a lot of different hats. But uh, today, particularly representing an organization called the Chicory Revitalization Project, right? And so what is chicken? Well, if we have a link queued up, we can show this short video that talks about exactly what chicken is. Uh, but in short, it was basically an organization of people much like ourselves that did very similar things using poetry as a tool for community engagement and activism. And this was way back in the mid-1960s. And they created this uh, magazine called Chicory that lasted from the mid-1960s all the way up to early 1980s. Um, and so it was basically represented as um, a platform for the voiceless, if you will, for people in Baltimore who had something to say but weren't necessarily writers, but still wanted to express something. And it was really cool because you had people in Chicory who were people who were not writers, who were not poets, but had something they wanted to express and got an opportunity through these programs they would do. And then also you had people like Lucille Clifton and Sam Cornish who were famous poets, but who also were a part of the magazine and were editors and were mentors to the magazine. So you had the span of people um, who were people who just really had something to say, who didn't really know how to write, but got a chance to, to activate that tool, and the people who were prominent writers of the time period and part of the black arts movement who also were part of this same collective. Um, and so what's going on, two things that happened recently. Um, for one, Chicory, we found out like the whole archive of Chicory was being stored at Enoch Pratt Library in Baltimore. Um, and then a program we did a few years ago 
um, we started the revitalization project, we created a art exhibit about the history of the magazine um, that went to the different libraries and was most recently at um, University of Delaware and is going to be um, going to a couple of different places um, around the state soon. And then, um, well, you don't have to take my word for it because this awesome little short video about the revitalization project really tells you exactly how it went down. This is what people were talking about then and how it reflects a lot of the same things that artists and activists are talking about now. And a really cool thing we're able to do with the Dewar students is we create something called the Poet Tree and where the poetry, we have pieces of poetry from the Chippery era and then student poems from now sitting next to each other 
and then we took magnetic poetry boards and we put all the different letters and words from those poems and the people were able to combine what made up those poems on the spot and on the board at the, uh, at the library and the exhibit created their own poem so it illustrates the past and the present and how it reflects what can come in the narrative that we speak about in the future. And a really cool connection to Chicory that connects to what's going on here today, because later on we're having the Gil Scott Harris listening party. And so a lot of people don't know that, uh, so Melvin Brown, who you saw there, who was the longest running editor of Chicory, Melvin and Gil Scott Heron were both in the John Hopkins writing seminar together at the same time. So like, connection. Crazy. Who knew? Um, I said, they didn't know that until like two days ago. So I guess I forgot. Um, I've been knowing a lot of stuff and then I forget that I know it. Just learn it again. Because it's fundamental to do that. Um, but uh, so, something really cool that we're going to do now is what we have here is we have actual poems um, from the various issues of Chicken. And so, but before we even jump up to that, we're going to do something um, called a blackout poem, right? Um, it's going to lead us directly into the exercise. And so Lisa is going to tell us about what a blackout poem is. Yes. Um, I'm upsetting it and or Delicia. You guys didn't know. Oh. Uh, I but, thought it was. Yeah, it's uh -huh. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, true, true that. Hi y'all. So um, raise your hand if you think you know what a blackout poem is, or if you know what a blackout poem is. Raise your hand if you don't know. How about I teach y'all if I don't know it? Ah, JK, JK, JK. Okay. Is it like you write a poem about that? Ooh, it could, but it's not, though. <laughs> it's, it's not, though. But, you know, the thing about art, it can be whatever you want it to be as long as you make it, you know? Um, so, could you actually be my model? Sure. Could you hold them? So a blackout poem, um, you take um, a piece of literature. It doesn't necessarily have to be a poem. It could be uh, a cookbook. It could be um, an essay. It could be uh, a script. It could be whatever piece of writing. However, we're going to use poems from the, um, the, the poems we have back here. Um, and you, you know, read the poem, take it in, whatever it means to you. And then you take um, a Sharpie. Spray paint, whatever, how I don't know how big your poem is. Your pen, paint, whatever you, again, art, you can do whatever you want, right? And you cross out words that you don't want to use. So basically, you're trying to find words that you do want to use to make a new poem. So I will read this poem to you guys and read the blackout version. We all good? We all set? We moving? Okay. Spiritual growth. Like roots of plants. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> like roots of plants absorb the waters. Thank you. And all natural things, so may I gather all the positive energies within me. May the trunk grow thick and tough as my will grow stronger and stronger like the stems that reach out in different directions, may my love spread throughout the land. May the leaves blossom to exotic colors as my spirit becomes radiant. The center stem grows straight towards the sun rays. So, so shall it be that I grow, that I may grow towards the heavenly rays into everlasting light. Boom. Original poem. Someone's art. And now you want to remix it, er? And new poem, this is not a poem that you made out of this person's poem. Roots of plants, all natural things, positive energies within me, grow stronger and stronger in different directions. May the leaves blossom, my spirit be heavenly rays. The poem that she wrote. Boom. Black like poem. Mic drop, but I'm not gonna drop the mic because technology is expensive. Now, if you get like, you took like an essay about that, <coughs> and then you made a black out poem about it, and then you wrote it on the wall, all black paint, and then you'd be like, black, black, black. 
bars. Like I was actually listening to you talk. I was looking at that. I'm like, wouldn't it be crazy if we made a black out of poem out of that right there? Yeah, right. I was just, you know, it doesn't have to be a poem. It can be I love black out poems. Um, there was um, another mini example. I was at this competition called Brave New Voices. It was a youth competition, international competition. We won um, 2018, 2016 Baltimore, just a little side note. But um, there was um, an Asian immigrant and they had immigration papers and like the actual papers the US government sends you when you want to be a citizen in America and she made a blackout poem out of the federal government immigration pa papers and it was like wow like wow like wow like, it, it, was, it, was, it was amazing so that was just another little example so to me I'm a less sexy explain the rest what if I wrote a blackout poem out of like a letter that my grandmother wrote me in ninth like, grade about like being a better student and not getting kicked out of school like happened in seventh grade? Right? I should stop saying the things in my head out loud. Interesting thoughts. So, so what we're gonna do now though is we gotta move around a little bit and um, up here we have different examples of chicken and poems. And so what you will do now is you can come up and you can take a look, take a glance at the poems and choose one that really speaks to you. And then that would be the one that you will work with to create a black poem. So, ready, set, go. I've done this a few times, so I know there are, there are interesting ones that are often popular. There's two Baltimore-centric ones. There's one about Africa in the park. There's all kinds like of spiritual ones. One of the time, or Black City, the Black City Summer, going home, Africa at the park, ancient time, denied, despite the pain and the bell chain. That's cool. Yeah, that's like a really interesting time. project explores how Baltimore's black communities have used art and culture to struggle, survive, and cultivate beauty for generations. The Chicory Revitalization Project is led by Melvin Brown, former Chicory editor, Edward Adam Jackson, former Chicory editor, Patrice Hutton and writers in Baltimore schools, Victor Rogers slash Slangston Hughes and Dumore Baltimore, Dr. Patrick Ore, Bar Early College High School Baltimore, Wesley Wilson, Kim Day, and the Enoch Pratt Free Library, and Mary Rizzo, Rutgers University, New York. Chicory was created as the magazine for people who don't like to write but have something to say. Through events and partnerships, the Chicory Revitalization Project uses poetry from Chicory to reach young people who have something to say about the world they live in today. Educators use Chicory to bring the past to life for their students. The past year and a half due to COVID-19, most of our programming has been online, and the Chicory Archive has provided a really amazing sort of interactive tool for students to dip into. While many of the historical documents preserved in archives and referenced in textbooks are written by people in power, Chicory allows us to hear what regular black people in Baltimore, many of whom were young themselves, were thinking, debating, and struggling with during an era marked by riots, uprising, political turmoil, war, and urban problems. Their words resonate with young people who are grappling with similar issues to them. Free resources are available to help teachers incorporate Chicory into their classroom. Every issue of Chicory is available online. Lesson plans and workshop materials can make it easy to connect students with Chicory. We can also feature student work on our Instagram account, at Chicory underscore Baltimore. Yeah, I can't see some of the words are so confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Oh, we got a young poet here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she might come out with the best one. extremely well-coordinated blue outfit and the fire hairy tubby shirt with matching blue hat. Give it up for Shantae. Yes, it is. So Tell us uh, why you picked the poem to pick and then share with black like Okay. Um, I chose one of a kind because I see myself that way. Um, and the phrase that kept sticking out to me is this is a city. So I retitled it, This is the City. Okay, cool. Everyone suit their style, trying to fit their design and not using big words to show who's number one. This is a city where all belong. Everyone's different, no harm. United by a seal of love, stamped from above. They don't put down others, it's not their faith. All over with a variety of colors, none feeling better than others. Air blows love, sun shines down, rain washes out. This is a city that won't go wrong. This is a city all along. Everyone does no harm. United by a seal of love, approval from above. Nice. That was awesome. Give it up again for Shantae. I also picked that one, and um, that also was the title in my head, but then I went with something more strange. Um, <laughs> but I really love the way that that all came together because it had such a bright ending yeah. and very uplifting and hopeful. Um, my version is a little less hopeful, so mm -hmm. give it up for optimism. Yes, mm -hmm. I will find some. Um, all right, who is the next verbal volunteer? All right, tell us why the poem Kit spoke to you, and then what did you do with the words? Okay. Yeah, so What's your name? My name is Nicole. Nicole. So give it up for Nicole with the fly scarf. Thank you. Let's give it for my mother. Um, so I actually picked the same poem. And similar to Slice Then, I actually had a completely different take on it. Um, and when I first picked it up, I was like, ooh, I like to look in the mirror one of a kind. So that's where I started, but that's not where I ended. Um, so I retitled the poem One Kind. Everyone trying to outdo, to fit their design, and be who. Everyone speaking, using big words to show who's number one. This is a city where everyone's different, does harm. They're united by a stamp with approval from above. 
many combined in the state. Put down others, cause it's faith. School's over with. Feeling better than the air through the city. The sun, the warmth, the rain washes out those who don't, who don't, uh, the air, mm. <laughs> the rain washes out those who don't belong. This is a city that won't go wrong. This is a city where everyone's difference does harm. They're united by a stamp with approval from above. Awesome, awesome. I feel like poems have like certain spines in them, certain words that stick out, and I feel like we're each identifying thematically these words. And then it's kind of interesting too how like um, there can be like what I call the come to Jesus moments in poems, where it's like this is the moment, but like this little moment is the whole poem distance out of this moment. I feel like we both found those moments and then found completely different destinations for you. Um, I like how, too, there was a line that you used a certain way. It was, uh, school is over. Yes, yeah, school's over. School's over with. It almost felt like a reverse of classes in. It's like classes <laughs> in. It's like school's over with. <laughs> it's like, but like with the opposite, almost like, it's like, uh, ironic meaning to it, the way that you phrased it. That was awesome. Um, who wants to be the next poet on the set? Right? I see someone who's like, I want to raise my hand, but I'm not going to. But I telepathically heard you say, I want to go. But my hand just didn't go up. And it was you. <laughs> She was like, <laughs> but I saw you with peripheral vision, right? Mm -hmm. So, are you ready? Yes. What's your name? <laughs> Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Give it up. Woo! Straight from the borough of self in the fly green hoodies. Brooklyn! I went with the same poem. <laughs> um, because of the name, I just like the name, so I chose the poem. Um, but I said, everyone dressed to their style, no one tried to outdo, driving cars to fit their design and not to say who would be two. Everyone speaking a regular tongue, no trying to be number one. This is a city where they belong, all different, but it doesn't harm. You united by a seal of love, stamped with approval from above. In this state, they don't put down others because it's not their faith. Schools all over, with a variety of colors, none feeling that they're better than the others. Throughout the city, sun shines down warmth throughout their souls. The rain washes out those who don't belong, because this is a city that doesn't go wrong. This is a city where they belong, all different, but it does not harm. United by a seal of love, stamped with approval from above. It's really cool how this thing is developing, but apparently we all had a telepathic connection. <laughs> Not just us, but it was like, all right, we're making a group piece today, so nobody knows yet. And then some of those same things kind of just like stick out where it's like, it's interesting how it's like, it's like the commentary on the particular city though it is Baltimore, it's like, this could be almost any city. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it feels like the reality of like, how it's not all one thing, and it's not all the other thing. It's like, it seems like everybody's picking out like these elements that are like, these are some things about the city that may not be the best, but these are some things about it that have redemptive qualities. Um, because, you know, I was watching this Doctor Who episode, and it was like, you know, life is power. Good things, power the bad things. And something, 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 deep quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree, Dr. Now, who wants to be next? I'm not giving any more telepathic vibes. I think everybody turned. Yes, what is your name? <clears throat> My name's McLean. McLean, welcome to the microphone. <laughs> Hold it down. With the boots, the walking, the plane. So I chose Black City Summer. So 
What happened? It was. What, what was the what was the uh, etymology behind the choice? So I just chose it because I just um, I, it was the second one I saw. <laughs> She did the first one, so I was like, I'm just gonna do it. And so the way I did it was funny as seems that in the summer we are always in a hurry. Coming from going to get just got sweating and work, sweating and stealing, but no money. Nickels and dimes and petty dollars. But what happened to the millions? Or rather, where are they? Don't nobody do nothing for nobody in Baltimore. That's crazy. That just sounded like it could have just been the poem. No, for real. Right. 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 I love the way you did that with such a rhythmic sway, too. Mm -hmm. Just like all we needed was just like a bongo in the back. No, yeah, for real. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Come on. That was awesome. Um, so we got time for maybe a few more. One, two more. Everybody is like blocking your telepathic wave. <laughs> get called out. Um, okay, you want to read yours? What did you do? Yeah, I like this one a lot. Um, I chose this because when I was reading off the, like, this is the news, I didn't even get to see all the poems um, in here. I was reading the Google Doc where we had our workshop listed and all the information, and I was reading the poems, and I was like, the spike, the vein, and the metal chain, what's that about? You know? And so I really like the title. And, okay, I'm going to read my poem. In the morning, in your mind, you, you know you, try fighting, yet your fight is in vain. Tighten the chain, screams, go fix that. Remember the cramps you endured, you had to endure. You dope, you in the cooker, you shot, you search for Dead you, finally you, twirl then you find yourself lost in your own private world, you clean. You find that hope without the dope, a better man. You know chains were made to bind, and you curse the chains. In this world, there is no suffering of the metal chain. I just try to like poems about someone like an addict and like their struggle with addiction. And so I was like, what if your struggle was with you? Because this isn't what, what an addiction is, just a struggle with yourself and there's a substance there ate into that. And so I was like, what if there was a struggle with you and you shocked the you who was always struggling with you? Then there would be no suffering in your own world. Fascinating. Give it up for city. You know, it's really interesting how blackout poems, it's kind of like the, the new version of the text you create takes on the voice of the person who's blacking out the words and making something new out of them. Because that just sounded like a poem that you wrote, just like one of the, like, just like say your poem. So <laughs> hmm, autobiographical, perhaps. Ah. I know too many things about the other. Um, cool. So, okay, I'll read mine. Uh, I was part of the one of a kind groupies. Mm -hmm. We are apparently many of the type. And uh, I renamed the title to Ode of a Kind. And I wrote it about a particular city. Everyone trying to outdo everyone. Who be two? Speaking big words to show who's number one. This is a city where everyone's different love colors the other sunshine. Rain washes this city. This is a city where everyone's love harms with approval. Yes. Yeah. And, all right. So, I just picked that one because it was sitting over there by itself on the podium, but also I looked at the paper and I thought I saw it said Ode at first, but I was like, oh, it's one. And I was like, what if it was that? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I was like, that kind of is. Mm -hmm. I, just, um, I just wanted to say, like, dang, we wrote, everyone wrote a poem here today, and like, you didn't have to like, 
right the poem, you know what I mean? I remember wrote a poem today, and so it being National um, uh, Poetry Month, uh, I challenge everyone in here to continue to write a poem each day for the month of April. So you should have 30 poems for the 30 days of April. Don't get it twisted now, I'm backed up. I'm like six poems behind. I wrote that poem when I thought I was cool with her. It's been two many days past. Like I gotta write pop six poems before I, I go on another day with my writing, you know what I mean? So I just challenge everyone, the writer or non writer, identify, because we're all writers, but it's if you identify as a writer, um, to challenge yourself. And it don't have to be no super, super, duper long essay poem. It don't have to just be only haikus, you know, art is whatever you make. You are the creator. So I challenge everyone to the 30 30, because um, I'm challenging y'all to like pressure myself to keep doing it. So I'm like, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you, guys. All right. National Portrait of the Days. I'm caught up. I wrote five so far. Okay. So I got like one a day. But I kind of cheated a little bit, too. So. I, I definitely cheated with that one first time we did. And it's like stuff in the dots. From yeah. the old stuff. I'm like, what? I forgot to do here. I can edit and make like a black old poem out of my own poem, basically. But um, yes, I agree. Write a thing. Like, that is a challenge that um, a friend of mine puts out there all the time. Like, not just for April, but for all the time. Like, write something every single day. What? That never happens? That's crazy. There'd be so much stuff happening in life. But, um, famous poet um, once said in a workshop of hers I was in, a um, poet named Nikki Finney, it's like, here's the secrets. You will never find time to write. It won't ever happen. You have to make the time. So, yes, I try to do that every day this month because most times you're like, yeah, I have to do it today. Uh, if you, yes, write as much as you complain, we have seven books. Yes. But it is almost time for lunch. So, uh, thank you for joining us for the remix and respond chicken poetry workshop. And um, if there's any final questions or anything, we'll be here. You can come and ask us about any of the things that are happening with Chicory or Dumor or any of the other hats that are often on my metaphorical head. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Slankston and Up City. Yes, thank you. Let's give them another round. Yeah. That was amazing. Um, a nice way to really get us into the mode of poetry. Um, and as they said, you will stick around for a little while. Hey, yep, okay, so we're going to grab some food. There's food on the landing. Um, we're going to grab some food. We're going to come back. And then once Everyone is ready to go. We're going to jump right into our Gil Scott Hair and Listening Party. Right. Chicory Magazine is coming back. It is returning to the world in both physical and digital form. And on April 13th, next Saturday, we'll be at the Penn North Library in Baltimore, right in the corner of Penn North, right across the street from the CBS to burn down in time. Um, that's, that's where everybody knows it is now. Um, and we're going to be presenting the, uh, the uh, mock for the proof of concept edition of the new Chippery Magazine. It's now here. Yes, it lives. It's like that cartoon gargoyles, where like the gargoyles were there in medieval time, and then like they got frozen in stone for like mad eons or whatever, and then they came back, and it's like they live again. So now Chippery lives again. That was a weird example. <laughs> Feel free to have some food because we have a lot of food. So, yes, thank you all. I'm going to pass the mic over to the needle guy, who is going to meet us on this um, Gil Scott Hero Listener Party journey that we're so excited about. <laughs> thank you, Sophia. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Nicole Moni. Um, and I'm one of the co-founders for the Needles Eye Academy. 
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jalen, uh, Nicole's husband. <laughs> our sister Mika is also a co-founder, and I lead our authentic partnership team. So the screen is a little bit small up here, but we're going to give you a little bit more background on who we are, the work is that we do, our namesake, which is why we're gathered here today, and then we're going to have a little bit more fun. So you've got. You should have a bag at your seat that has a bookmark, a pamphlet, and a QR code that will have lyrics to the album that inspired our name. But before we get into that, and if not, raise a hand, I can bring one around to you. This is our full team. I'm all the way on the left. Um, Mika is in the middle, and Nicole is on the right. Mika is our director of belonging and impact and Nicole leads our academic strategy and programming, which is what we're bringing to you today. Okay, um, so anytime we work with any group of people, we try to anchor ourselves in our four understandings. These four understandings ground all the work that we do anytime we partner with anyone. We try to say, is there any sort of connection to any of these understandings? So the first one is Chesapeake Legacy, and it is our belief that there's so much history here that like if you live here, you're from here, you're just already poised to do great things in life simply from being up here. Um, the next one is the cost of quiet, and that is the idea that there are many ways to like, be an activist, be a change agent. You don't always have to be at the protest holding a sign. Um, you can use your voice in many other ways. And then I'll turn it over to Jalen to talk about our last two. The last two are fluid intelligence and head and heart. We really believe that you can be interdisciplinary. You can grab a little bit from here and mix it with this and still reach a result that ends up either inspiring others or gets you a little bit further along your goal. We embrace you as you are today and stand to support and encourage you to keep growing in that way. And the very last is not to have to sacrifice or compromise. If there's something that really gets you up in the morning and, and you know grinds your gears like me when I'm thinking about something really deeply, that can also blend well with things that make your heart beat, make your heart yearn, and draw you closer to things that you really have developed a deep passion for or have grown a love towards. And our names. So this has been a labor of love, and it's hard to believe we're coming up on four years since starting. So in addition to serving as a commissioner on the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture, we have been leading work that honors the legacy of Gil Scott Heron. Mm -hmm. And Pieces of a Man is the album that we're here to listen to today. One of the songs in the album is called Needle's Eye. And at your seat, you should have a really small piece of paper that will take you to the lyrics of every piece of the album. And we're going to be asking you today to lean into Lucille Clifton, lean a little bit farther back into Francis Ellen Watkins Harper, and clearly look around your table and look inside yourself to lean onto the pieces of you that will help lead you in this workshop and hopefully give you an opportunity to build on the awesome workshop that the Chicory Revitalization Project led earlier this morning. Right, so I'm about to cue up the music, um, but in the meantime, again, Jalen was referring to these QR codes um, that should have been at your table. Uh, please make sure you're able to scan them. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, you can, if you scan them, you'll have it'll bring you to a lyric genius, and there you'll be able to find all of the lyrics for all of the songs. Um, on the screen, we have some guiding questions, but they're also on some sheets that were at your table. They have our logo, which is this big green thing on it, um, and those are just some questions to help get you thinking. Um, sometimes we listen to music which is right in the car and we're like, yeah, this sounds fun. But like, how often are we really truly listening? Um, music makes up the background of our lives, but it's also so much more than that. So, as you're listening today, we encourage you to 
pick a lyric that draws you in. Think about what is it that resonates with you. Is it the language that Gil was using? Is it the structure? Is this a metaphor? Is it a simile? Is it something about the way that he said the words? The second guiding question we have for you is, what is the tone of the album? Um, how does it change or build over the course of certain songs? So which ones? Our third question is, how does he relate to listeners how he views the world through his lyrics? So what's his opinion on the world? How is he showing you that through his music? And lastly, think about your favorite title in the, in the album. And you can think about this through the song that resonates most with you, or literally through the title that you like the best. Um, what are the most important words there? And how does the title represent or symbolize the song itself? So, has everybody had a chance to pull up the QR code, scan that with their, with their devices, so we can follow along with some lyrics? All right. We're going to start off with the first song in the album. The revolution will not be televised, and I can come up here and let you know like, what song we are on in case you like, get so enthralled with whatever song you're listening to, you don't realize that um, the song has changed. Jalen, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I think that's solid. We're going to be walking around the room, so as questions come up, please don't hesitate to tap us. And uh, if you're missing something that we were referring to at the very beginning, I'm more than happy to come across with copies if you need. Oh, I almost forgot. So we did some poetry writing earlier today. And so our challenge to you, you could have your first poem for the month of April today, if you haven't done it already is think about that song that resonates with you. We challenge you to write a poem inspired by that song. Use some of the lyrics, which is why you have those QR codes um, to write your own poetry. And then we'll have some time at the end for folks to come up and share. Woo! Give me a thumbs up if that sounds good to you. <laughs> All right? Excellent. <laughs>
already on the breakfast the other day, bro. Yeah. I got the music. on the Eastern Shore. 
So our hope is that we're going to be able to give the mic back to young people and put them in a position of leadership to have their thoughts, words, and ideas shared with other organizations. Our academy is, is not a new practice for this culture. There have been black men and women for centuries that have been building spaces for us to learn and grow, regardless of what's given to us. And we tap into that tradition. We love doing it. And we actually have two of those pilot laureates here today, Evan Murray and Brooklyn Port Pierce of Easton High School. So Without further ado, we're literally going to give the mic back to them and start our open mic today. Oh. <laughs> and that's why we had to all potentially write for them as well. So Brooklyn and Evan conducted this exercise earlier this week. Um, so they got to chill while the rest of y'all were doing all this deep thinking about the poetry. Um, so, so they're going to introduce themselves, they're going to tell you which song from the album they were inspired by, and then we'll share their poems with you. So thank you, Heaven. Hi, I'm Heaven. Um, I'm from Public County. I go to Easton High School. Um, Mr. Mark actually got me in the program, so it's pretty cool. And I chose the song, uh, When You Are, You Are. It was a really good song, and I kind of related to the lyrics a little bit. And so I'm going to bring my phone down. You could be so beautiful when you are who you are. How long will it take to realize you're a star? I never really understood that. I would always disagree until someone proved that there's only one of me. When I listened to this song, I thought of one very familiar, the one I see when I pass a mirror. Jill wasn't an Gil was an intelligent man when he made this song. It's so pretty and I listen to this one. If you ever feel a little bizarre, just remember, you could be so beautiful when you are who you are. Oh. Hi, I'm Brooklyn. Um, I'm also from Talbot County and I also go to Easton High School. Um, I chose the song Pieces of a Man because, I mean, that was the album name and that was really the first song that I came across, so that was a song that, um, that I chose. Um, as we sit eye to eye, face to face, I see another contender of the human race. Jack and Jigsaw pieces made a man, all living life at a different pace. Within each piece, something different shone through, a hint of happiness come knifing through the gloom. The struggles of living weight on their shoulders, the feeling in their soul, nobody knew. So as I sit, examining my reflection, heart in my hand, I accept the fact that I have no plan. Despite the sight of a bigger picture, I realize they are nothing more but pieces of a man. Oh, cool. Yeah. It says it's 
Great. So, I wrote a thing, right? But, uh, fun story. So I actually interviewed Gil Scott Perron one time. Um, I was at this event in Baltimore, they threw a meeting called Poets in the Park. And he was like under a tree, cut. He had like, some shades, he came, and he was like, yeah, he talked just like doing documentaries. He was like, yeah, brother, go ahead and ask your questions, young brother. You gotta hurry up, because we're saying we gotta move on to the next, to the next gig. So he did hundreds of songs over the years, and we gotta do more hundreds of songs. And he had all these amazing questions for this magazine called Escape the Matrix, and this was 2008. And, um, but my favorite Gil Scott Huron story actually happened recently, this year, like a few months ago. Um, me and my daughter was coming from D.C. on the Mark train. Um, she had performed at a conference. Um, she's a youth poet laureate of Baltimore. Um, and, I was nice here. and I I was recently, I was reading this book that the poet um, who has some Baltimore connections named Talon Macy did this book where he interviewed different elders from the past generation that spoke the word. And, um, and I was telling him, I was like, I'm about to be done reading this book, and then it's yours. You got to read it. And, um, and so, we talk about the book, we start talking about Gil Scott Run, telling these stories and stuff. And we was loud, like the loudest people on the train. It was like you know, on TV when like the main characters in a like, restaurant, and somehow they can hear each other. Everybody else is just in the background, not really sound like they're talking, but they're talking because it's TV and it's the show we about the people. And so we was like that, just like being our own main characters when we was out on the train. And then, um, then at some point, one of the like conductors who was working the train came over, and I was thinking like, oh, he was pretty loud. I mean, he probably was like, y'all gotta shut up. But no, he was like, you know, it was magical listening to y'all talk this whole time. And telling all these stories, it's like because I went to Lincoln University, oh, wow. and me and Gil Scott Aron was in the same class, and oh, wow. we used to talk every day. It's like it was like a time machine listening to y'all talk. That was amazing. That was everything. I was just like so surprised. Wow. Um, that was cool. And so, so what I did was I uh, I created a poem using the song titles um, from the whole album, um, and just like went in order. And it's called Man Made, Man Made Pieces. The revolution will not be televised if you try to save the children. Because the night is for me and the devil. Day is a lady and Coltrane contains the most odd of evenings. Breathing in the fumes of white supremacy, spitting out capitalism. Obviously, home is where the hatred is. When you are who you are. Every new day is a test and a blessing. I think I'll call it morning. My vision in collision with tears. I think I'll call it morning. The pieces of a man. I once was my astrology and my odyssey undefined. A sign of the ages. Ink on pages. Pigment on pavement. Or down you fall from pigment aiming. They gun so you can die. You pass through the needle's eye. And still can't find heaven. The prisoner trapped behind his own bars with a brand new sense of freedom, a brand new sense of time. God's body left behind, God body divine, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, inside the religion devised from my own mind. My limit is the sky, both ancient and new here at the same time. It's always been winter in America. Our skin is what makes the sun shine. The end is the beginning. Face death and open your eyes. And so, I like like a couple of like secret Gil Scott Iran Easter eggs in there, um, like some titles from other songs and albums of his. Um, and now I have my poem number six for <laughs> the day that I will post later on Facebook. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to do another poem. <laughs> I can do that then. Other people want to share with you. Oh, I know. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, this poem begins with a quote. <clears throat> Anybody can tell me the quote. Um, I'll give you a secret prize or something. <laughs> But I'm gonna put your fist up when you pull out this. Everybody. Powerful people cannot afford to educate the people who they oppress. 
Because once you are truly educated, you will not ask for power. You will take it. Slave him in your stomach. Broken Bible verse in your pocket. The watch that watches time like the red line riding towards your heartbeat. The stolen overpriced soul that you can't buy back played back on repeat. Barcodes branded on newborn babies, birth certificates. There is a price selling your life's worth, selling yourself back to yourself before you can download your self worth. There is an act that interacts with your melanin, but you gotta die first. There's dirt in my dialogue and a callus on my soul, scratching at the infection like a man turned table. There's a bloody crucifix carved in our fingerprints, because the Lord knows as soon as the cock crows, it will take hold and siphon the guard out of your soul. Forget you. Forget them too. I am Jesus at a peaceful protest, fully strapped. I'm John Brown posting pics on Instagram. A free slave been sold back. I'm Harriet Tubman in the club making it clap. I'm Imhotep on crack. I'm your worst nightmare, because I don't know who I am, but I know how to I am. A biracial binary baby with an iPhone plugged into his neighbor, keeping Africa fully charged, only to get charged double for the cost of my life back and catch a charge from those in charge. Charged with no rights, so you damn right for my life to write back, nigga. Frederick Douglass ain't me, Twitter. You could be Trayvon Martin, Delaney King, and still not be accustomed to the hood you in. They put Christ in a hood under the media, crucified a spin. So when the zealots was finished yelling, you may equally unaware of the blood spilling in the linen and the lineage of the hood you in. So if you brown, six shots will put you down for the count, because your very skin is a threat to the world you in. You can't be in the struggle and not struggle. I guess the Grio is back with a vengeance. White guilt had sex with white privilege and produced assimilated niggas. There's a railroad of bones at the bottom of the ocean. There's a chamber of souls in the guns our sons are holding. There's a loud graveyard planted beneath every American city. There are a billion black bodies coming back to the living. You thought the zombie apocalypse was intense? Just wait until you get a hold of my niggas. See, this is the dispensation of truth in the new age, and there's so many slain ancestors coming back for revenge that'll make reparations look like minimum wage. No justice, no peace, but I'm gonna scream justice in this peace if it's just us in this peace, but don't expect no just us once we take to the streets. Black lives don't matter. Black lives are mad. Like black, like space, like stars and constellations, melanin, matter, nigga. Naturally intellectual ghetto galactic alchemists. <laughs> Never. Yeah. But sometimes I wonder if it all really matters when I hear the devil's laughter and if dreams are just nightmares that heaven shattered. A wise man once told me, the black man is God. If God looked into a mirror and the mirror shattered. Mm. Wow. Oh, 
to stop the slave He said, oh, yeah, that's a bad boy. I know him. If he was free, he would have been the last poet. So that's, that's a badge. I know in the spoken word um, uh, arena, that's a, that's a badge of honor. And I, I hope that's something that Slaveston carries with him. So I love the connection. Um, I don't know if anyone said it because I've been running. But just the connection between historically um, jazz and poetry and how seamless that was for Gil. Um, what April being, of course, uh, Jazz uh, Appreciation Month and National Poetry Month. So, are we in Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, because I was going to say, I really, 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 when the Needles Eye Academy reached out to us, um, Commissioner, well, Jalen, who I'm referring to him today, works with the museum in multiple capacities. So when he reached out to us and said, you know, he wanted to do this, I was like, yeah, we're doing it. And I always try to make connections to Maryland with um, our work, and of course, with Gil Scott Heron having that connection to John Hopkins, which a lot of people don't know. My father always tells me that man was brilliant. And I think he was like a metaphysics major. Like, he was brilliant um, in, in everything he did. Um, and that's why he lives on with us today. So I want to thank everyone for being here, um, attending. Please feel free, if you haven't already, grab some food. Uh, we will, if, if you haven't viewed the exhibit, view the exhibit. Our next event um, will be May 15th, which will be an artist talk uh, with Jason Patterson, who's one of the um, uh, artists in the current exhibit, along with uh, Thomas James, who's the curator, the guest curator, who's been around today if you've seen him. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming. Feel free to mingle, um, talk to the artists, I mean, talk to the poets, talk to each other, and thank you all for being here. It's like straight fire, like it was a vibe all the way through. There was a, a I didn't write the poem title, um, because it was on my phone. I chose the poem or the song, um, the, the song, oh, home is where the hatred is. I was like, ooh, it just stuck out to me. Oh, and I made a blackout poem. So, yeah, so if you were here earlier, we did blackout poems. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this song, I'm gonna make a blackout poem, and I rewrote it so I could read it better and not be like struggling up here. That's what took me so long. The twilight I left three days ago seems to know home is where the hatred is. Home is pain. And it, and it'd be a bad idea if I went home again, as far away from as you as far away from me as you can, ask why, watch me die. God, did you ever try, sick soul, can watch you die. Home is an empty vacuum that's now filled with my silent screams. Home, try to heal my broken heart. It'd be a bad idea if I went home again, home, again, quit it. Can't go home again, home. Home. You know I can't go home again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you all so much for being here, participating, listening. Um, before we wrap things up, we want to invite you all to keep in touch with us. Um, so this QR code, as well as this big QR code, on our banner will take you to our link tree. Here you can find more information about any publications that we might have been featured in, links to our social media, our website. Um, it's really the one-stop shop for us. Um, I also would like to take a moment to highlight the Young Writers Cherry Tree Conference. Did I get that right? 
Um, it is an on-site program that happens at Washington College. Um, this year it will happen from July 16th to the 19th. And it is basically a creative writing, like intensive, on-campus experience. Um, but it's expensive. It costs $795, 800-something once you add the cost of books. We know that money can be a barrier for a lot of students, particularly students of color, that might not come from many means to be able to participate in these programs, which ultimately help colleges and universities create a pipeline of diverse students um, for their graduating class in the year forward. We, as the Needles Eye Academy, are going to sponsor two students. So Jalen, could you talk a little bit more about our Unbound Scholarship? Washington College is home to the largest literary undergrad prize in America. And often folks, even right here in Maryland, don't know the opportunity, don't know what's happening. And a large part of our work is around access. So we're blowing that door down so that futures can be unbound too. And we just need applications to roll in. So if you know of anybody who's a sophomore all the way up to a senior in high school, um, a young student of color from any Eastern Shore County, who would be uh, benefiting from this experience or would be dipping their toe in for the first time not knowing what's ahead, please encourage them to apply. Um, and I, just in summation, in the little bags that you have around your table, there's a pamphlet for that, but there's also a bookmark. And the Latin that's within our logo means to sew. We really hope that what you felt in this space today, you carry with you, you carry the album with you, and you carry the charge to help build these spaces all across our state. The reason that we exist, and much of the history that we carry on the Eastern Shore, is because people dare to be literate. So please keep pressing on, carry your poem with you as you mark the others for the rest of this month. And we really, really hope you felt empowered today and leave empowered. Thank you all. And right on. Thank you all for coming, I guess. <laughs> you look for the rest of your Saturday. <laughs>